in action. Ah, yeah, it's Jace is starting to lose. <laughs> His arms are giving out. <sighs> All right. What is going on, guys? My name is Jason Morris. Today, we're going to talk about external monitors, and namely this one right here. This is the Andy Cine 4K A6 Plus monitor. They did send this to me. Um, thank you for sending it to me, Andy Sydney. That is absolutely amazing. But this isn't a sponsored video. This is just my own complete independent review. It is not biased. You can buy whatever monitor you want. I'm just showing you what this monitor has and what price and why you might actually need an external monitor. And in this video, I'm gonna give you five reasons why you might need an external monitor, which is the five reasons why I needed an external monitor. Let's get into the video. The lightweight A6 Plus is a 5.5 inch 4K HDMI input output monitor. And is an on-camera monitor featuring 3D light import, a touchscreen interface and multiple imaging tools. The A6 Plus supports up to DCI 4K video in additional various HD and SD formats in single size HDMI input and an HDMI loop through output. The A6 Plus features a 500 candela per square meter brightness and a 440 pixels per inch. The 1920 by 1080 IPS touchscreen with a 170 degree viewing angle. At the rear of the monitor is a single Sony MPF battery is all you need to power this bad boy. You can also power the A6 Plus using separately available DC adapter. There are three quarter 20 threads on the monitor, one on the top, one on the bottom, and on the side, but you can also use the cold shoe mount that's included in the tilt arm, which is also used to mount an accessory like a microphone or a light. It also comes with a sunshade and micro HDMI cable that's included in the pack. So also, if you are new to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. That would be absolutely amazing. I'm trying to pump out as much content for you guys as possible. Um, so if you are new to my channel, I do filmmaking tips, tricks, tutorials, and obviously reviews as well, like this one is today. Now, there are obviously a whole bunch of Sony people, especially us full framers that like to record on our full frame, don't have a flip up screen or a flip side screen an articulating screen, a fully articulating screen. The A6000 series, so you've got the 6400, the 66 and 6100, um, all have the flip up screen now, which is fantastic for those people who want uh, to film themselves or vlogging style. I just wanna talk about the reasons why you might actually need an external monitor. So it's, a lot of people think it's just for looking at yourself. If you are recording yourself like we are right now, uh, you do need to see your composition. So if I was sitting like this, for instance, I'd be able to know that I'm off frame. Yes, I am in the rule of thirds, but I, I don't wanna be. I wanna be almost in the center, something like here. Here's quite comfortable for me. I'm almost in the center. I mean, yes, you gotta be just in front of your lens, but one of the biggest things about knowing your framing and composition is if you end up showing the camera something. The composition is extremely important. So if I held the monitor like this and I wanted to do a thumbnail, see, I would know this is in, well, I wouldn't know this is in focus because I'm looking at it, but it looks in focus. But if you wanted to do a thumbnail capture like this, you would be able to see the composition. So number two would actually be focus. Now, a lot of the Sony cameras, um, are really good when it comes to autofocus. You can pretty much just let it go and 100% trust it. Yeah, so just knowing that you're in focus is, is really good, especially if you are doing the whole uh, showing the screen something. I've got focus peaking on, so all this is red. Here we go, here, I'll show you guys. See that? This is trippy because it's a screen and then you can see in there is also the screen with the screen and then in that screen is another, you get what I mean? 
but you can see there focus peaking is on. So you'll see a whole bunch of red lines uh, where the focus point is at. But yeah, you can obviously see there's the red focus peaking. Uh, you can obviously change it different colors, white, yellow. I tend to have it red because it's very uh, domineering and I want to be able to see where my focus point is. Especially when I did, uh, or when I do short films or short scenes, I tend to use a lot of manual focus because I wanna be in control of uh, where I am focusing. So now one of the third reasons is pretty silly, but um, having a bigger screen while you're on the gimbal. So with specifically with this gimbal, that's the one thing that kind of grinds my gears is that the Dewin Crane 2 uh, blocks the screen. So when I have the gimbal in front of me, I can barely see my A7 III screen, which, you know, kind of sucks. But I do, excuse me for a second. I do have this side mount here where I can put the monitor on the side um, so you're doing this action right here and you're predominantly looking at the screen. That is one of the biggest reasons why I like having an external monitor when I'm using the gimbal. So having that bigger screen gives you more sort of uh, vision of where your composition is, um, also uh, all your settings around there. It's just really good to, to see it on a bigger screen. That actually has more detail than Sony's amazing, amazing back screens. They're really lacking in their rear screens. Please start upgrading your rear screens. They're, they're not great, all right? So let's get some better detail in them. So uh, having that bigger screen is also great. So number four is aspect ratio. I don't know if you guys know this, but you can choose the aspect ratio on the Andy Cine 4K. If you can see this right here, See this yellow line around here? I've got it into uh, 2.35 is to one aspect ratio. So that is your kind of standard cinema aspect ratio. So if I am filming a short film, I can frame directly to that. Um, otherwise, if you are filming in your regular 16 by nine frame format, um, you just don't know where your headspace is going to be or if you're far enough back, then you're gonna to need to do, you know, if you're not far enough back, you're gonna to need to pull out a bit, but then you've got the sides. It's just easier if you've got that aspect ratio guideline. I know in the industry, uh, back back in the day, you uh, some cinematographers and direct uh, DOPs used to use tape. So they would tape uh, the back of their screen so they would have an aspect ratio guideline. So they would know exactly where they were, they were filming which is a fantastic idea, but if it's in the monitor itself, then you obviously don't need that. This one actually has a few different functions. So it's got 2.35 to one, which is your standard one. 1.85 is obviously just a little bit uh, bigger than your 2.35. Another good thing is um, four by three. If you wanna be creative and use the old school TV four by three format, fantastic, um, go you being creative, that's amazing. Um, but there are a whole bunch of other things you can do. So you can use 90%, 80%, or even 70% of your 16 by nine frame. It almost looks like an APS-C sort of style. And I suppose number five would actually be uh, just having a larger screen so you can have your menus on it. And it's just easier to see. So when it is mounted next to my a7 III, my histogram is always on. Um, I really like having my histogram on because I wanna know my exposure. Not specifically for a studio style because my exposure is pretty much gonna be, well it will, it's gonna be exactly the same the whole time. I am in control, full control of the light. Whereas if I am outdoors doing client videos, uh, short films, all that sort of stuff, Exposure is extremely important. And to have the histogram there telling me what my exposure is like is so much better than coming home and having overexposed footage or even worse, underexposed footage. I don't know what's worse, underexposed or overexposed. They're both pretty bad, but it all depends on the dynamic range of your camera anyway. But having that histogram there, having all these features on your screen is, is definitely a plus. 
So that's it from me guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that like button. That would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you already haven't. And if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, welcome back. Thank you for sticking by. Um, really appreciate having you guys here watching my videos. Other than that, my name's Jason Morris and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, let's get it. So I really hope you're not hearing that noise. Uh, that's not from my monitor. That is from, that's from the receiver. Can you hear that? The receiver's got a really loud fan. So I just turned that transmitter off. Holy shaboozle. That was loud. Listen to this. It's so quiet. All that audio had that sound in it. Shoot. I'm not gonna do that again. I'm not gonna do that again. Oh, I'm not gonna do that again. Nope, I'm not doing it again. I really should do it again. Oh, why? That was louder than I thought. Well, <sighs> Hollylands Mars 400. If you are a director, Mars 400S. If you are a director, stay the hell away from the boom guy because, man, that fan was surprisingly loud. I might actually have to do some Adobe Audition tricks to that. Um, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to jump into Pro Tools and find that track that frequency that I need to equal out. Ugh. See you next time.